Hello and welcome to the May Wednesday webinar from the IEA Clean Cold Center. I'm Benedicta Brox and I'm the Communications Officer here at the Center. Our monthly webinars are based on our technical reports which are available from our website at www.iea.coal.org. Residents of member countries and employees of our sponsoring organizations can download our reports of no charge after a one-off registration. Please visit our website for details. The subject for today's webinar is power generation from coal using supercritical CO2 by Chen Su. This webinar examines supercritical CO2 power cycles and reviews the recent technology advances in developing supercritical CO2 cycle power generation systems for fossil fuels. The report on this topic will be published later this summer. I'll now hand you over to my colleague Chen. Good afternoon, everyone. Right. Recently, there have been increasing interest in power generation systems using supercritical CO2 cycles, in short, SCO2 cycles. Extensive R&D activities are ongoing to develop SCO2 power cycles for a wide range of applications such as nuclear power, fossil fuels, solar power, and so on. Today, I will present to you the SCO2 cycles for power generation from fossil fuels, particularly from coal and the, the recent technology developments. The SCO2 cycle energy conversion system is an innovative concept that transforms heat energy to electrical energy using supercritical CO2 as working fluid. CO2 is non-explosive, non-flammable, non-toxic, and readily available with low cost, which makes it an ideal working fluid. It reaches supercritical state at the moderate conditions and has thermodynamic properties that support higher operating efficiencies. Supercritical CO2 has higher power density, which means the size of all system components can be considerably reduced, leading to smaller plant footprint. Two primary approaches to power generation SCO2 cycles have been investigated. They are indirect heating closed Britain cycles and the direct fired semi-closed RC fuel Britain cycles. A closed loop Britain cycle operates in a way similar to a, to a steam Rankine cycle. A number of variations to the simple SCO2 Britain cycle have been proposed and investigated. In general, for high temperature operations, a recuperated recompression Britain cycle is selected. Semi-closed RC fuel Britain cycles are well suited for fossil fuel oxy oxy combustion applications with the potential for full carbon capture. Direct fired close oxy combustion SCO2 cycles can potentially achieve significantly higher cycle efficiencies than the indirect heating cycles due to the much higher turbo, uh, turbine inlet temperature that can be attained in the direct fired cycle. The range of potential applications for the indirect heating closed Britain cycle is broad since it can be used in essentially any application that currently use 
uh, Rankine cycle. Its low critical point means that SCO2 can, be, can attain a better thermal match with the heat source in the wide temperature range, and therefore indirect heating closed SCO2 cycles can be used both in topping and bottoming cycles. The most promising application area for direct fired semi-closed oxygen combustion SCO2 cycles are in fossil fuel fired power generation. The main benefit of the SCO2 power cycles is the high cycle efficiency and moderate temperatures. The power cycle is simple as the compression, expansion, and the heat rejection of the SCO2 are being carried out on the single phase. The reduced balance of plant requirements and the smaller plant footprint can potentially result in lower capital and operating costs, and therefore lower the cost of electricity. Direct fired oxy combustion cycles for fossil fuel applications have the additional benefit of facilitating CO2 capture, as the combustion product is a high concentration CO2 stream that is ready for carbon sequestration, significantly reducing the cost of carbon capture and storage. Components used in SCO2 power cycles are radically different from those in steam Rankine and the gas Britain cycles, but are considered to be well within the capabilities of existing engineering and the manufacturing processes. However, several aspects of the SCO2 Britain cycle still require significant R&D. For example, the operational experience of a CO2 turbine and the associated turbo machinery at any scale and under commercial operation conditions is limited. The high density, high pressure, and the rapidly changing properties of CO2 near the critical point represent a relatively new and a very different regime for turbo machinery design. Another big technical challenge is the design for low cost and the robust compact recuperators. Recuperators will be the key to delivering high cycle efficiency and the primary cost adding component. Due to the required heavy thermal duty and the need to operate at high temperature, high pressure, as well as high pressure differentials, the design of heat exchanges faces significant technical challenges. Challenges also present in designing the oxy combustor for high pressure operation with a minimum amount of excess oxygen and a large amount of CO2 diluent. Oxy combustor operate at high pressure at pressures higher than 20 megapascals poses a significant technical risk as the high oxy combustor inlet temperatures enable auto ignition. The reaction kinetics and the mechanisms at high temperature and the pressure are not understood, and the re uh, radiant effect of heat is uncertain. Material selection for components such as turbine and the heat exchanger are, that are exposed to CO2 at high temperature and high pressure is challenging since materials have not been tested commonly under these conditions. While pure dry CO2 is virtually inert at low temperatures, previous studies showed that internal carburization and the corrosion of steels or even nickel alloys occurred in CO2 environment at high temperatures. For direct fired SCO2 cycles, Impurities such as water, oxygen, and sulfur oxides 
resulted from combustion of fuel we present in the working fluid and may affect corrosion rates. Therefore, oxidation corrosion data in such conditions and environment are needed. Other R&D needs include optimized power cycle configuration and the system integration for optimal cycle efficiency and operation to address startup, shutdown, transient, and part load operations. The development of sub-components and the new control methods. Fundamental studies and the system modeling and the analysis are also essential. Over the years, and in particular in the last decade, R&D efforts have been growing in the USA, Europe, Japan, South Korea, Australia, and recently in China and India as well. Listed here are only a few examples out of a large number of R&D programs in which many companies, research institutes, and the universities have participated to develop SU2 cycle technologies for power generation. Several small scale SU2 cycle test loop test loops have been assembled and the design and the fabrication of SU2 turbo machineries, including the turbines compressor the bearing seals or alternative uh, or alternator at such small scales have been developed and validated. Test results suggest that there will be no major surprises in turbo machinery design and operating efficiency as the technology is scaled up to higher power levels. A ten megawatts Net power SU2 pilot plant test facility is planned to be built in the in Texas, USA. The conceptual design of the 10 megawatts high pressure and the high temperature SU2 turbine has been completed. Japan's Toshiba has developed and developed a 25 megawatts electric SU2 turbine for the NET Power's alarm cycle demonstration plant. The turbine design essentially combines gas turbine and steam turbine technologies. The turbine has an inlet pressure of 30 megapascal and the turbine inlet temperature range 11 to 1200 degrees C. This turbine has been built and was delivered to the construction site of the demonstration plant in November, last November. I will talk about the alarm cycle later on. Several so compact heat exchanges developed for operating in high temperature, high pressure petroleum gas and the chemical processes such as the printed circuit heat exchanger PCHE and the plate fin heat exchanger PFHE and some innovative compact heat exchanger designs are identified as good candidates and are being investi uh, investigated for use in the SCO2 power cycles. They all have advantages and the limitations. For example, for example, the uh, PCHE can withstand pressures over 60 megapascal and temperature ranging from cryogenic to 900 degrees C with close temperature approach. However, PCHEs are expensive. Also, it has been reported that a typical PCHE could fail in three to 800 complete thermal cycles or fail closer to 200 cycles if operating under severe thermal transient conditions. On the other hand, 
the PFHE can withstand high temperature and high temperature differentials, rapid thermal transient, but only moderate high pressures and the moderate pr uh, pressure differentials. The pressure differential it can withstand is less than one and a half megapascal. ND is ongoing to develop designs and the construction methods of robust and the cost effective compact heat exchanges. Other types of heat, uh, compact heat exchanges such as cast metal heat exchanges and the ceramic micro channel heat exchanges are also under development. Currently, PCHE is the most widely used recuperative type heat exchanges for SCO2 power cycle testing. It, it is also used in the EcoGen's commercial heat engine and in a lamp cycle demonstration plant. Toshiba has also been developing the oxy combustor for the alarm cycle demonstration plant. The test rig attained the required combustion pressure of 30 megapascal in 2013. The scale demo, demo combustor will be tested using the facilities at the demonstration plant before being commissioned as the integrated part of the complete combustion turbine assembly. Supercritical oxy combustor is also being developed by other developers, including Southwest Research Institute and the University of Texas of USA. Extensive tests have been conducted worldwide to identify materials compatible with high temperature, high pressure SCO2 operation and the performance requirements of individual components. Results from these studies indicate that, in general, the degradation, degradation due to corrosion, oxidation, and the carburization of the testing materials in SCO2 is insignificant in temperatures lower than 500 degrees C. The corrosion oxidation rate of the testing materials increase with increasing temperature, but the SCO2 pressure has minimal effects. High concentrations of chromium and the nickel significantly increase the corrosion resistance of steel alloys, and the higher alloy materials perform better than lower alloy materials in high temperature SCO2. The corrosion oxidation rate generally decrease with increasing chromium concentration of the alloy. And the austenitic steels are more resistant to SCO2 induced corrosion than the ferritic martensitic steels within the temperature, within tested temperature range. While well, these test results provide useful data for system and the components design, more tests are necessary to better understand the characteristics and the behavior of materials under commercial SCO2 operation conditions. The selection and the design of more, uh, optimum SCO2 cycle configuration depends on the given application. Several attractive SCO2 cycle configurations for indirect heating closed breaching cycle and a direct fire semi-open SCO2 cycle have been explored for power generation from fossil fuel. However, it is likely that the optimum power cycle has not yet been identified. Analysis and the comparison of various cycle layout are being conducted. Several conceptual designs of utility scale coal based indirect heating close SCO to Britain cycle power plant, including designs for key components such as boilers, heat exchanges, and compressors, 
have been developed by different companies. Of course, the viability of these designs need to be tested and validated. NET Power has been developing the alarm cycle, which is a semi-closed, recuperated, oxy-combustion transcritical CO2 power cycle. The core process is a gas-fired breathing cycle shown here in the orange bits. It operates with a single, single turbine that has an inlet pressure of around 30 megapascal and a pressure ratio of 10. An alarm cycle power system can achieve high plant efficiency with near 100% carbon capture. The power cycle is simple, using only a combustor, a turbine, a recuperator, and a cooler, um, and a compressor. The reduced balance of plant requirement, small footprint, leads to lower capital costs. The developers target net plant efficiency based on low heating value is 51% for coal and 59% for natural gas, while producing a stream of high purity CO2 that is ready to be transported to transport and uh, uh, storage. A 25 megawatts net power gas field alarm cycle demonstration plant is under construction at the moment and it is scheduled to be commissioned later this year. At the same time, a 300 megawatts gas field alarm cycle commercial plant has been under development and it is currently in the design phase. A coal-based alarm cycle power system is also under development. This system is filled with coal-derived syngas. It integrates a coal alarm cycle with a commercially available coal gas fire. Four additional R&D needs have been identified for developing the coal-filled alarm cycle. They include the selection of the appropriate gasification process handling of corrosion from impurities found in coal-derived syngas, the methods of contaminate removal from the system, and the development of a combustor for low calorific value and the hydrogen-containing fuels. This work is ongoing at the moment. The first commercial indirect heating closed ACO to Britain cycle heat engine, which is developed by a company called EcoGen Energy Systems. It was brought to the market in 2014. The heat engine turns waste heat from various industrial processes to electricity, and it operates at relatively low temperature. The commercial operation of EcoGen's heat engine proved the technical and the economic viability of ACO2 bridging cycles for power generation. EcoGen is now working with industrial partners and research institutes to develop a closed ACO2 bridging cycle power system that operates at higher temperatures. So, to sum up, the ACO2 breathing cycles holds great potential for providing alternative power generation systems that can achieve higher plant efficiency and full carbon capture at lower costs. Two pathways, indirect heating closed breathing cycle and a direct fire semi-closed oxy-fuel ACO2 cycle, 
have been identified for power generation from fossil fuels using SCO2 cycles. There are some outstanding technical issues need to be resolved. Extensive R&D has been carried out and a significant progress has been made recently. Some small low temperature SCO2 Britain cycle power systems are starting to emerge in the commercial market. If solutions can be found to meet all the technical challenges in developing the SCO2 power cycles, they can re revolutionize the future power generation from coal in the carbon constrained world. That's the end of my presentation and thank you very much. Thank you so much for that, Jim. And I think we have uh, one question. <clears throat> the first one here is, what's the difference between the closed and the, the semi-closed circle? Right, the um, closed Britain cycle operates like a Rankine cycle. So it can replace the existing coal power plant that use a steam Rankine cycle now. And uh, the semi-closed Britain, uh, Britain cycle is like a, uh, a, a gas um, cycle use the uh, combustion gas uh, product to drive the uh, uh, gas turbine. <laughs> so we have another one. Um, so I'll just write, um, I'll just read this one out for you. The first one is why is NET Power, the only company looking at SCO2 cycle at such high tur turbine pressures and temperatures? I think it's for, it's for the um, uh, efficiency consideration. It's the only company. Uh, there are companies looking at different um, OC combustion, but it's in the early stage of development yet. Okay, and we seem to have one more here. Um, the question reads, did you say that alum cycle is transcritical? I thought it was super critical. Yes, um, at the um, CO2 cooler, the pressure is lower than the uh, critical pressure of CO2, so it's a transcritical cycle rather than supercritical cycle. Okay, thank you so much for today. That's all we have time for, I'm afraid. Um, the PowerPoint will be available to download from the web webinar page of our website later. Our next webinar will be on the 21st of June by Dr. Steve Mills on improving the flexibility and emissions from coal fire plants with gas, gas co-firing and solar energy. Thank you all for joining us today and goodbye. <laughs>